Hi friends, a very warm welcome to all of you to my channel. I am your host Bala Subramanian, and my channel is Let Us Learn Something New with Subbu. So today, my topic of discussion is a general introduction to the atmospheric boundary layer, which we also call ABL. So let us try to learn something about the atmospheric boundary layer. Now to start with, if I say how do I visualize the meaning of boundary or I say boundary layer as I add little bit thickness to this boundary the boundary becomes boundary layer. So in these three pictures I am going to show you what actually this boundary or the boundary layer to a general man means like. Here on the very first curve or first plot what I see here is the district map of Madhya Pradesh different districts are separated from each other through different colors and the boundaries. In the immediate next photo, we see a cricket boundary where a player is just outside the boundary. It actually defines whether the ball should be inside or outside, whether it should be given four runs or not. In third picture, I am also showing two different lanes. One is for going and another one is for coming. So in principle, in plain words, if a layman wants to define a boundary layer, or a boundary. A boundary or a boundary layer can be defined as a real or imagined line that marks the limits of something and divides it from other places or things. So what do we gain by defining a boundary layer? I can say it helps in two important things. Number one, identification and discrimination of two different and distinct objects as we have seen from the three pictures. And also it helps in framing the rules and regulations for formulation of a scientific jurisdiction. But as we go deeper into this field, the complications arises. Here we can see a boundary layer can give rise to complications as again I am going to show in the three pictures. The definition of boundary layer essentially must include a scientific framework for the mutual interactions between the two separating objects. Now here what is happening is in the previous slide we understood that there are two different objects which are separated by a boundary. But in this particular frame what we are seeing is both these objects are interacting with each other through this boundary layer. For example this particular player is almost touched the boundary so umpire has to decide whether it should be given 6 or not. Same is the case with second picture also and in the third picture when we know that the left line is for going and the right side is for coming if there is some interplace where we can go through it gives rise to the interactive processes which need to be addressed very very properly. So the question is how do we address these issues in an adequate manner? The answer lies here is understand the scientific basis behind the formation of this boundary layer and also investigate the spatial and temporal scales behind the interactive process. What I mean here is spatial means this boundary where the interactions are taking place, what is the thickness of that and second thing is temporal scales that means how much time it is taking to interact between the two frames or two different objects. Now we will get to the fluid dynamics which is the main topic here. In fluid dynamics the point comes is how the formation of a boundary layer takes place. The answer lies is when I say boundary layer are we able to clearly distinguish between the two different places or two different objects. In the here first picture a rock is shown from different colors. Yes I can say that there is possibly two different rocks two different layers which are separated. In the second one very delicious pastry is here you can see different layers which is definitely moist and in third picture curled plumes are there. But all three what I am showing here is the question and the answer lies is whether the clearly visible boundaries are seen. Answer can be yes, can be no, it can be both. But important point here to take home is whenever a fluid, let me say fluid is a particular substance which can flow. Whenever a fluid interacts with a solid or another fluid that can lead to the formation of a boundary layer. Thus 
we define a boundary layer is the layer of a fluid in the immediate vicinity of a bounding surface where the effects of viscosity must be significant. This also takes us to the scientific basis for the discovery of the boundary layer. Now let us see how this boundary layer came into existence in the scientific framework. The discovery of the boundary layer, the credit should go to the German scientist Ludwig Prantl who for the first time on August 8, 1904 gave a 10 minute speech in third International Mathematical Congress at Heidelberg, Germany where he showed that there should be a layer of the fluid through one experiment which was a age old experiment where he has used the wheel and a fluid actually to understand that when a solid surface is interacting with a fluid he told that exactly at the point where the surface is interacting the fluid velocity becomes zero and as you are going away from the surface gradually the fluid velocity increases so he said that there should be one layer where the fluid velocity gradually decreases as you are approaching to the surface and that was the discovery of the boundary layer even though it was worth the Nobel Prize, he did not get the Nobel Prize but he opened up a new challenge plus the new era, new scientific framework for investigation of the boundary layer. Now, how this atmospheric boundary layer gets formed? As I said, for formation of a boundary layer, we need to have a fluid and we need to have a surface. In the case of atmospheric boundary layer, the earth surface acts as the fluid, acts as the solid surface and above that whatever is the fluid that is the atmosphere. So atmosphere flows on the top of earth surface gives rise to the formation of atmospheric boundary layer. But atmospheric boundary layer is just the part of the atmosphere. If you study the complete atmospheric science most of the students say which are the different layers here. Yes we have five different layers. In the bottom most we call the troposphere just above that stratosphere, further above that mesosphere, further above that thermosphere and then comes the exosphere. Now how do we remember this sequence? So let me give a simple trick. Trust me in the exam. That is the phrase which will take you always remember how the sequence is. Trust TR stands for troposphere, ST stands for stratosphere, ME stands for mesosphere, TH stands for thermosphere and EX stands for exosphere. Now the atmospheric boundary layer which I am going to define is the part of the troposphere which happens to be the lowest part of the atmosphere. Now here as I mentioned the atmospheric boundary layer is the lowest part of the atmosphere and that is the part of the troposphere. Now if I want to divide the troposphere probably I can classify into two categories which I am going to do in the next one. The troposphere can be divided into the atmospheric boundary layer and free atmosphere. But what should be the scientific basis for this classification? Here you can see what I am mentioning here is the atmospheric boundary layer. Yes, it is the part of the troposphere. And this troposphere we can divide into two different parts. One is the free atmosphere and then atmospheric boundary layer. But what is the basis for this classification? The basis is the response of these two layers to the incoming solar radiation. So what is the incoming solar radiation? Here I am going to show the incoming solar radiation starts from the sunrise, peaks at the noon time and again comes down by sunset. Whereas the outgoing long wave radiation goes in this pattern. The net radiation because of this one is what gives rise to the impacts on the lowest atmospheric boundary layer as well as the free atmosphere. But when we define these two, the important three points which we can take home is first of all the response of ABL and free atmosphere is different to the diurnal evolution of incoming solar radiation. Second, the mixing mechanism, whatever the air is mixing with each other, it is different in the atmospheric boundary layer and in the free atmosphere. In the case of atmospheric boundary layer, the turbulence dominates whereas in the case of free atmosphere the main winds dominates. Last but not the least temporarily varying vertical thickness 
what i am saying is the vertical thickness of this atmospheric boundary layer that varies temporally day time it will be very high night time it will be very low but that is not the case with free troposphere or free atmosphere so these three things distinguishes the atmospheric boundary layer with the free atmosphere now how this atmospheric boundary layer varies with the time over a land surface for that we have to understand that if i take the diurnal evolution when the sunrise takes place sun is at horizon and gradually with time sun reaches overhead and then again it comes to the horizon and in the night time we do not see the sun so as an influence of this diurnal variation the atmospheric boundary layer also evolves with the time what i am going to do here is the sunrise is flagged here sunset is flagged here so during the night time that is between sunset to sunrise the atmospheric boundary layer generally cools down and we will be getting a very stable boundary layer where the <coughs> temperature <coughs> inversion takes place during the day time the sunrise after sunrise thermals grow and it gives rise to the convective mixed layer the main difference between the night time and the day time boundary layer is day time the boundary layer tends to grow so whatever you mix up it vertically grows and it reaches to the high altitudes but in the night time because of the lack of incoming solar radiation this mixing is confined to the very lowest heights typically the night time mixed layer or night time stable boundary layer can be few hundreds of meters probably 2 to 300 meters and the day time it can go as high as 3 to 4 kilometers over deserts that is what the typical boundary layer looks like the lowest part of the atmospheric boundary layer is called surface layer where the fluxes turbulent fluxes of momentum heat and moisture remain constant so the salient features of abl if i say number 1 it will be shallow during the night time because of the stable conditions and in the day time it will be well mixed and deep because of the convective conditions when i take the same same things over the ocean which we call the marine atmospheric boundary layer in the marine atmospheric boundary layer the diurnal evolution is generally suppressed and also the daytime mixed layer heights will be sufficiently lower than what you get over the land surface now after understanding this one if i take the two standard textbook definitions of the atmospheric boundary layer i have taken here one from j r garrett and another from roland b stull important points which i am trying to highlight which i have underlined here is the atmospheric boundary layer the effects of the surface which are included the friction heating and cooling are felt directly on time scales less than a day that is the important point from garrett and if i go to the stull book stull says the abl responds to surface forcings with a time scale of about an hour or less so if i mix up these two particular definitions very important points which are number 1 response time of abl yes it is between few hours to less than a day and turbulence is the primary mixing mechanism which dominates the atmospheric boundary layer now the question comes atmospheric boundary layer we have studied but why do we need to study and investigate in the weather and climate related studies as you can see here we have plenty of books on the atmospheric boundary layer but a question comes why do we need to study this the answer lies here <coughs> first the energetics <coughs> in the terms of atmospheric energetics about 50 percentage of atmospheric kinetic energy is dissipated in this abl you can probably compare it with if you are earning some amount as your salary and if your 50 percentage of salary is consumed for some particular purpose you cannot ignore it so in the same perspective the atmospheric energetics we have to understand the abl processes because 50 percentage of energy is consumed here second the weather prediction all the weather predictions are done through the numerical weather prediction models and in the nwp models 
accurate representation of APL is one of the crucial components. And same leads to the extreme weather events. Whether it is a tropical cyclone or thunderstorms, they are invariably tied with the inflow of moist ABL air. And last but not the least, the transport of water vapor, which virtually all the water vapor whichever goes from the surface to the above, it has to travel through this atmospheric boundary layer. With this, I would like to conclude my brief talk here, but I am sure that you may be having few questions which you may like to clarify. So I may request you to please drop your questions in the comment box. I will definitely get back to you and I will respond back to you. Thanks a lot for patiently listening to my talk. I hope you all have learned something new. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to press the like button. Share this video and subscribe to my channel. And press the bell icon for receiving regular updates. We'll meet you again in the next video.